In today's video, we are going to be breaking down Bryce James. This is LeBron James' son and how Bryce James shoots the basketball. He's a very good shooter in the game. So let's get down, let's check him out and see what he does so that you can improve your shooting as well. Really quickly, if you wanna be able to shoot the basketball better, make sure to go check out my shooting workout that is down in the description below. Okay, so first off, we're gonna look at a side view of Bryce James. If I, by the way, say Bronny James, that's just my mistake, however, with Bryce James, he starts his gather right at his hips, and we see this even when he's doing step backs. He generally gathers somewhere in this area. Here he's starting with roughly 90 degree knees, and we can actually measure this right here, and we will be measuring this throughout the video as well. Now, with his knees, he's at 113 degrees, while his hips are at roughly 99 to 98, 95 degrees. We can see that his elbow is actually at roughly 85-ish, maybe 82 degrees. And we can also see that right now he's looking at the rim. This gives him peripheral vision of his teammate so that he can pass if he wants to. And this defender is actually playing him not that bad. He's on his heels. He's got his hand up. Bryce is a shooter. So let's get down into a shot. When he goes up into a shot, he has a low set point. It's roughly in front of his face to the right side. And we can see at this point he's up onto his toes. When he goes up into his shot, he releases the ball nice and high. That gets that ball over top of that outstretched hand of the defender. But also what this is doing for him too is that at his shoulder, he is going at about 140 degrees, maybe 145 degrees in that range. What that tells me is if we go from this plane, he's releasing at around 48 degrees, which should be somewhere around 48 degrees on the drop of the ball. Now, if we actually measure the drop of the ball, he is in that 44, 43 degree range, which is exactly where you want to be. The reason being is, is if you come too shallow, if, you're, if, you're, if your shot is like a bullet, it goes straight, that rim looks really small to the ball, as it does to us right now. When the ball is coming down onto the rim, the rim looks a lot bigger to the ball, and it's going to be easier to make that shot. However, if there's too much arc, there's going to be too much gravity pressure on that ball, and if it hits the rim, there's a higher chance of it bouncing out. However, if it's within that 40, roughly, to about 40 five degree range, as we can see right here, at that point, this is going to be a very accurate shot because if it does hit the rim, there's a higher likelihood that it'll bounce in because there's not as much gravity pressure on the ball coming down that it bounces out. And there's not it's not shallow enough for it to just rim out and bounce out. This is why those Kawhi Leonard shot in the Raptors playoffs bounced around so much. It actually came down at the perfect angle. So record yourself shooting and you can actually really learn a lot from basically just breaking down your own footage of how you shoot. And we can see here he gathers at the hip, he gets a slight tilt away from the basket, however his whole body is tilted the exact same way. There's a lot of coaches that say you need to be squared up perfectly to the rim. That's not the case. The reason why you would want to be tilted and why 99.9% .9 of all shooters are tilted is because that allows their shoulder and elbow to get in line with the basket. We can see on the gather as well, when he's gathering that ball, that he's down low. He's almost sitting in a chair. When he's right here, if we do the angle on his, degree, on his knees again, about 108, maybe 110 in that range. If we look at his hips, they're in that 100 to 105, 110 range as well. His shot doesn't change. This is what you need to be able to do to become a great shooter. Your shot form doesn't change. It's the same exact thing no matter which way you're shooting, to the left, to the right, step back, side step, whatever. Same thing. And then he's able to release. Now here, we can actually see that he releases much higher. We can see that. We can see that in multiple different ways. We can see that here where he's releasing instead of a 48, he's releasing at a 65. Now that is because there's an outstretched arm of the defender. This is why you don't want to rush your shots and why you don't want to shoot contested shots because things change at the last second. For example, a 20 degree difference on the release. For most players, this can mess them up because they don't practice that, but he's still able to make this shot and it was still able to be a swish. When you're practicing, once you start reaching close to 50% from three, shooting your regular shooting form, you need to start practicing high arc shots. You need to start practicing a little bit slightly off balanced 
maybe swaying your feet forward and your shoulders back. You need to start practicing different movements in your shot that you would be making in game if there's a player who's closing out on you. Now if you're looking for his set point, it's roughly in front of his right eye. However, it's a one motion shot all the way up. And if we look at the rotation of that ball, there's the silver, silver spot right there. If we go really slow, that's one rotation, and then there's a second rotation right there. You want to be able to get between two to three rotations before it hits the rim. Or more. If you get 18 rotations, that's insane, but like that would be even better. Because if the ball hits the rim, if it hits the rim without spin, there's a high, high, high likelihood it's just going to bounce out. But that spin slows down it slows down the progression of that ball which means that if it hits the rim there's a higher likelihood it'll just bounce in you know those shooters touch shots that you hear about this is exactly it and this is what i mean by shooting off balance shooting just slightly to the side with your right knee up high release being able to shoot these shots still getting that rotation on that ball is going to really help you if you actually practice those shots if you only practice spot shots Guess what? In game, when you're off balance, you're not gonna probably hit them at a, hit those off balance shots at such a high percentage. So you need to start practicing both, not just spot shots. I hope that this video has helped you. Make sure to go check out my shooting workout that is down in the description below, and I'll see you guys again in my next video.